Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight division collision. Well, there is no denying this man's striking credentials. Prevailing wisdom is he's gonna try to keep this fight standing tonight. He has to. You know, this is what got him to the show. It was being able to use the hands to set up the kicks. We all talk about the high-level boxing background of this young man. But as he's developed, he's developed great knees. Yeah. He's developed great timing, great counter skills, and also the beautiful right high kick. The right high kick is something he hides very well as he follows with a jab right hand, left hook. High kick comes over the top, and he can put you to sleep. No doubt about it. He will try to put on a striking clinic once again here tonight. All right, so here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next when the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. And now our tail of the tape for this heavyweight fight. So more than 15 years, the gap in age between these two fighters, some differences in height and reach. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of St. Petersburg, Russia, Bo Crusher. And now we're producing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 154 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Assassin. Okay, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. They touch him up and we are underway. All right, so we got two classically trained strikers here. Any chance this fight actually goes to the ground? This fight does not go to the ground. This one will be fought in the pocket. Two guys will stand in front of each other. They will trade punches. They will trade kicks. It's going to be a classic matchup that you normally see inside of a ring. We get it in the octagon. Nice straight punch. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the temple. Well, you saw the tail of the tape. He has a reach advantage and made good use of it there with that punch. Oh, he's got his back. Now he's got to start trying to drag him to the ground. Then he can look for submission. Head kick lands. Oh, combination lands, and it seemed like almost every strike found the target. There. He's so accurate when he decides to attack. It is a sight to behold. Big kick lands. That was a thudding leg kick. 
Big punch land. Ooh. Man, he's timed the shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing in Tom Brady. Stop it. John, stop it. <laughs> and a nice job at least staying upright on that. And there comes the separation now. Well, the right hand has been there at times, not that time. Ooh, head kick lands, he's hurt. And they clinch once again. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Oh, now going to the judo throw, he ends up in side control. A lot of options for him here. Yeah, he can either go ground and pump or he can chase the mission. All right, close guard now. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. Let's see if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount and they rush. They get nervous. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm winning. Reality is, you're winning, but it can change in a matter of seconds because then they can be gone. He's got to drop his hips to be really heavy. Oh, looks like he's transitioning on ball. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jujitsu guys. He's gonna tag armbar here. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. And this might just be a matter of time. All right, full guard here, DC. We'll see how soon he tries to pass. Well, he needs to be passing immediately. In the full guard is where you are in most danger as a top fighter because they have all of their submissions. They have the guillotine, they have the arm bar, they have the kimuras, they have all their locks when they're in the full guard. So if you pass, you really do limit the danger that you're in from the top position. All right, so a lot of highlights over those previous five minutes. DC, take us through the replay, if you will. A lot of good action but punching led the dance. Punching was the thing that stood out to me. That allowed him to take control of the round. Last round, he was all over you, but you're better than that. Come on now, let's shake it out. Let's get back in there, let's get back to the game plan. Hands high, work behind. All right, here we go with round two. Oh, made good use of his size there as he lands the flush knee. And he landed the right hand there. Big kick land. Just misses with the Jets. Now he's got the Muay Thai plug. And they separate. Oh, beautiful jab there. It's one thing to have length, of course. It's another to use it effectively. Beautiful job with that jab. Man, DC, his hands look good. A lot of volume, a lot of accuracy tonight. He's doing a great job being accurate. He's also very fast. Look at the hand speed, right? Spinning back fist. Stuff to take down, no problem. And they separate. What a punch. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Oh, collar tie. Out of range with that one. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Oh, he lands another strike to the body. Really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Ooh, big shot lands. And both guys really throwing with authority. Left hand punches the clinch. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. And they separate. Right punches there. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Oh, combination of knees. That is not what he is looking for. He better raise that guard quickly. He better raise that guard or he's going to fall asleep. You cannot allow someone to knee you in the head. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here. And as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Oh. <laughs> oh. And they separate. Big body kick. And he switches to southpaw here yet again. 
Oh, he switches his stance again. Got the single collar tie. Ooh, knee. big that knee. knee hurt him. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. There's no kill on that leg kick. Oh, damaging knee to the head. What a fight so far. A lot of high-level highlights from that last round, DC. Take us through the replay. If he fought like this, I would be comfortable entering him into a K-1-level right? kickboxing competition. He's that good at finding and landing those kicks at will. He needs to continue to do this as the fight goes on. Just looking to recover. Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. Just misses with a left hook there. Good punch, Lance. Just over three minutes to go in round three. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Well, not sure if he's lighter on his feet or what it is, but these last couple of rounds, He's been far more aggressive, a lot more pressure. Oh, he's really starting to light him up now. He lands a big knee to the body. And he engages in the single power tie. Big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. That one appeared to stun him. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press it. He's got to go chase that finish down now. I wonder if the offensive fighter's gonna start to get frustrated here. Most if not all these shots are getting blocked. They're getting blocked because he's fighting one of the best defensive fighters in the UFC. Nice job there to land the knee strike to the body, again making great use of his length in this matchup. Big punch lands over the top. That's as good a punch as he's thrown all night. The punch that lands down the middle, the one that you don't feel, is the one that lands perfect, and that one landed perfect. Oh, he heard a bell in the jam. Oh, spinning back fist. He didn't telegraph that one at all. Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. Single collar tie now. Back and forth we go. Much improved defensively as he blocks the shot. Good punch. Beautiful body kick. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Excellent work with those strikes. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from those previous five minutes, DC. And uh, no padding, no glove on that foot. No glove, no padding. And look at the hip action when he throws those kicks. He's not only kicking just for feel, he's really trying to damage his opponent. And as the fight goes longer, you will start to see it taking effect. All right, DC, buckle up. Here we go with our next round. High number of kicks landed in the previous round, and he'll look to keep it going. He'll look to keep winning the fight with his kicks. He's throwing high kick, leg kick, body kick. He's even throwing a couple spin kicks in there. This guy is so educated with fighting with his legs. All right, single collar tie now. 
That's a big strike right there. Just out of range with that right hand. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Oh, single collar tie here. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Nice single. Oh, look at the redness underneath that left elbow. He is badgering that left side of the body. All oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Lands with the ground and pound. Now the guy's got on bar, he's attacking it on him. Recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. Now he falls back into the finishing position. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. All right, full guard now, DC. The fighter on top needs to be trying to gain posture to throw ground and pound and then move to the next position. But if you're on the bottom, you've gotta build a shield. Try to push your opponent off to try to get back to your feet. So pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Oh, so an interesting decision there is he decides to stand up and relinquish the dominant position. 15 seconds to go. Oh, that's a nice strike. And there's the buzzer indicating the end of round four. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot of highlights from which to choose, but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown game. And that's what he does, right? He's a grinder. He's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you, drag you to the floor. It doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. He just wants to continue to make you work the entire time because he understands this type of grind most guys can't keep up with. Oh, left hook to the head, it's blocked. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Oh, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it was coming high, and now he's got to hurt bad. Nice strike. Oh, he lands another strike to the body here, really starting to connect on a lot of strikes to the midsection here in the latter stages of this fight. Oh, and he lands yet another flush knee. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Trying to stay in this fight! Oh, and now a beautiful hip toss DC. We'll see if he can capitalize from here. I mean, that was beautiful. The way that he took the underhook, stepped all the way across, and hit that hip toss. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh, and he lands a punch there. Good connection by him on that. Great connect, so fast, so accurate and watch the ability to land from anywhere. He does everything so well, and he's so calm. He's 
so calm in the face of such a big spot. Working out of that southpaw stance. He gets to his spot, the tie clinch. Then he starts to let the knees fly. Watch knees to the body. Once again, no surprise, DC. The fighter with the longer reach able to land another punch there. He blocked the punch. Pretty significant welt to the left side. How good is that right hand? A oh, little single collar tie there. All right, lands a kick there. Pretty well done. Really good accuracy landing that kick. Takedown defense holds up. Well, whatever works, now he switches his stance again. Oh, collar tie. All right, boy, tie clinch. A lot of elbows and knees could be coming from here. We'll see how he chooses to attempt. Yeah, it's a very dangerous position, but an advantage. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, he might be out. Nice punch land over the top. Both guys landed big shots. Official decision now in, the buff has it. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest. 49-46. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Bo Crusher. Well, he did not get the finish that he certainly prioritized when we sat down with him at our fighter meeting, but a win is a win. He gets it done by unanimous decision. And he said he wanted to finish, but sometimes your opponent's not willing to play the game. In those instances, all you can do is control what you control, and that's fight to the best of your ability. He did exactly that tonight.